I have had different relationships where marriage has been brought up and I am so thankful that I trusted the Lord in those seasons and wow. didn't um, put marriage or even a wedding. A lot of times it's just the <laughs> wedding yes. people put before yeah. marriage. The dudes are like, nah, but the girls are like, yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's true. I'm so glad that yeah. I didn't idolize those things because what the Lord spoke to me was that he has a best for me. Yeah. Welcome to the Growing with the Nearest podcast season two. I am Brian. And I'm Sonia Nira. And we want to thank you for joining us on this journey as we explore the topics of faith, purpose, and relationships. We are so excited today. We have a singles panel-ish because yes. we have two people. <laughs> I think three people would be a panel, but we have our panel-ish, and I'm so excited. Mm. This is Jenna Lee, and Hi. this is Ian. Um, Brian, do you want to introduce Ian, then I'll introduce Yes, Ian and I. Ian and I. <laughs> Ian and I. <laughs> that is a tough one. Ian, yeah. Ian and I. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and I uh, met at Legacy Nashville we Church. Did, yep. um, Ian is just an amazing dude. Um, Ian is a six foot four, five. six foot five. Yeah. But man, <laughs> this guy has uh, just a heart of gold. And so yeah. Ian and I have had the opportunity to get to know each other uh, over the last year. And he's a single man with on a mission First and foremost, to uh, to know the heart of God, and yeah. second, yeah. you know, in everything that He does in His life, in is just living on purpose, and really maximizing His this season of singleness that He has, which is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, living your. Uh, thriving in your season of singleness. And so we have Ian with us today. Who else do we have with us, son? We have Miss Jenna Lee Alexander. You've done a lot of great things yes. in Thank you. your short time that you've been here on earth. Mm -hmm. And originally from Texas. That's right. Ooh, what what else? A small town between Houston and Austin. Yes. Nice. Where the they best. make bluebell ice cream. That's always yeah. the thing. Oh, that's, that's cool. amazing. That's, that's an important cool. city in America. Awesome. Yep. Oh my <laughs> word. That's so fun. What would you want our audience to know about you, Miss Jenna Lee? Man, I just have um, a heart to see people that don't often get seen wow. and speak their That's identity awesome. into them. Yeah. yeah. Amen. I am walking in a season right now with Miss Jenna Lee where mm. she heard the voice of God to basically put all of everything to the side mm. and to work with kids. And I just have so much respect for you, Miss J. It's yeah. really unreal. And when you just said, you know, I have a desire to see the unseen. Yeah. You know, I just, I get to see that every day. I see you do that every single day. Thank you. Give us, you know, a 30,000 foot view of, of, of what this season of your life looks like. You know, both of you are, are single, but quickly approaching, you know, the time where God is going to bring, uh, God is going to bring, you know, your spouse. Yes, you know? and I do want to say, we're saying single in the context of you're not <laughs> married, married yet. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Because we have someone sitting at the table that's dating someone. So I want to honor yeah. that dating someone. <laughs> but even, but even, but even in, yeah, it's singleness, you know. You I are, you're single until you're married. Single that's or right. married. That's good. Those yeah. are the two things. Um, so I would love, you know, Ian, I would love for you to start and just, yeah. you know, give us a 30,000 foot view of, of what that looks like in this season for you. Yeah, I think, so when you asked me to come on and talk about this immediately in my head, it's like, you know, what do I feel like the Lord's done in me? One over the last year or two, and really over the last probably five or six years as he's formed and matured things in me. Um, and so in this season of life, I think it's really been important for me not to exalt my dreams above God. Wow. So it's like something may be good and it may be right, but at the end of the day, it's like, Lord, I'm pursuing you. I'm seeking you. And from that place, you know, I'm delighting myself in the Lord. And then one day he'll give me the desires of my heart. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's been plugged into the local church, yeah. plugged into local community. Come on. And from there, letting the Lord refine priorities, desires in me wow. that, you know, maybe five or six years ago, I would not have been ready for dating or even marriage, but now my heart being in such a better place for that. And I think a lot of that's come just from being plugged into a local church, serving, pouring yourself out. And then from there, your heart being, in, at least in my case, my heart hopefully being in the right place. So when that time does come, yeah. I'm ready for it. Yeah. So I yeah. think for me, it's just been doing the things that I know to do in front of me and not 
worrying that we're focusing too much wow. on the dating and the marriage side of it, Ooh. even though it is a desire in my yeah, life. That's, that's so good. good man. That <laughs> That'll is, preach. That will You preach, know, it sounds man. simple, but that's a really hard thing to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. And Agreed. really what you just said is like you're humbling yourself. Yeah. You know, like, and I told someone yesterday, I said, you know, humility is not usually, it doesn't usually feel good. Yeah. I know I'm humbling myself when I'm actually uncomfortable. Yeah. Not when I feel like blissful, well, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, you're just that's talking good. about humbling yourself in singleness, which is powerful. Yeah. I, you know, and I wrote this, this note down, I, you know, being good stewards of every season, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, that's exactly what you're talking about. Cause I feel like so many people, it's so easy for people to live their lives longing for the future wow. and longing for things to come that good. they forget that like only today is promised to us. Like all we have is what we have right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so we have to be faithful stewards of what we have right now Amen. in or and every seed, every seed, every plant for tomorrow is being, you know, planted today. Wow. Mm -hmm. So good. You know, so every good. plant that we'll see, that you'll eat the fruit from tomorrow yeah. is being planted today. Yeah. Oh, and so yeah. I think so many people, you know, in our generation and the generation uh, behind us, you know, it's it's easy for them to get caught up in tomorrow and forget that, like, everything you'll see in tomorrow is being formed in today. I love that. And so, so true. I think yeah. that it's so good. Jenna Lee, how about, how about you? You know, just a 30,000 foot of what your life yes. is looking like in this season of singleness as, yes. you know, you know, that day of marriage will come very soon. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm hoping for it. <laughs> yes. Amen. Which is a good thing. <laughs> and it's that's one thing I've learned, though, that it's it's OK to hope for that. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I used to have um, fear behind that, um, maybe fear of rejection. And it kind of inhibited me from being hopeful or wow. even fear that I might scare a guy away because I am hopeful for marriage. Well, yeah. Yeah. But when, you know, I'm a godly woman desiring something God given. Yeah. And when you align with a godly man that has those same desires, it's not scary to them. Yeah. yeah. And so I've just transitioned seasons a little bit. Um, I was single, single, and now I'm single dating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my single, single season looked like, um, just being very intentional about who I was surrounding myself with. That's good. Um, when I moved here, um, I just prayed, Lord, I know I need to rebuild community, but I want to be around solid people mm. that have things that I don't that will help me grow. So good. And um, that community has grown me so much in my single season to where I'm prepared for marriage in a way that I wasn't before. I'm also now dating someone out of that community. Wow. So I was being intentional yeah, about awesome. putting, you know, just being around solid people that, hey, maybe something will come from that too. Yeah. yeah. So something interesting about both your stories. Now, I don't know the details, details of your story, but you guys both moved to Nashville as single people. That's got to be very, I've only, well, no, I did move. I moved one city once because the Lord told me to go to Bible college. So I know from experience, like what it takes to, you know, you're not married, you're by yourself and you're like going to another city. Tell me about what that was like. Cause I know yours was just a word from the Lord yes. and then yours was a job, but obviously you're a godly man. So you definitely had a word, but I would love to hear what that's like because it ultimately led you to this place. Sure. What that looked like for me was the Lord gave me a dream one night um, that I needed to move from Houston, Texas to Nashville. Wow. And I was so convicted when I woke up from that dream that that's what I had to do. I was here two months later and I didn't think about the fact that I was going to have to rebuild community. Wow. Um, <laughs> and my first probably seven months here were so hard. Wow. Things yeah. were shut down because of COVID. I, I couldn't build community even as I was trying to. Yeah. It just, I was isolated um, in that season and in that season of isolation, I kept going, but God, there is a season of assignments coming wow. to where I won't just get to be you and me all the time. Yeah. So I'll stay in this place um, for a little bit with you. Uh, and we went through some really hard things in those first few months um, that were necessary to become the woman I am now. Wow. Yeah. wow. Amen. That's amazing. Did Come I answer on. your question? Yes, yes you did. <laughs> okay. you did. Um, so for me, 
I, I think moving to Nashville almost was the first time I'd ever moved to a place where I didn't know everyone, anyone yeah. already. Yeah. It's yeah. like every time I moved elsewhere, it was always like, oh, I know one person. Or, yeah. And they were kind of maybe the door to get yeah. me into community. And so here it's like, I don't know anybody. And I'm a naturally pretty introverted person. Yeah. Mm. And so it's like, oh, how do I build community when I'm so shy? I just sit on the back <laughs> row. Like, I'm not, it's not my inclination to like just yeah. go s- talk to people and say hi. Yeah. Um, so for me, yeah, I mean, I think the Lord has maybe almost healed a lot of things in my heart over the last year or two. Wow. Um, I mean, similar to your story, I think the, the first probably seven to eight months of being here were very painful. The wow. Lord was rooting out a lot of things in my life. Yeah. Um, maybe idols that I had built up yeah. and things that I had maybe exalted above the Lord in an unhealthy way. And so I think being part of community is, is a big thing, not digital community like COVID has, you know, kind of exacerbated, um, but like being <laughs> a part of like real physical community, people you can hug, people you can talk yes. to, people yes. that know your story, yes. people that know what you're walking through, yes. things like that, I think have healed me in a way that really I didn't even know was possible. Wow. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just, I mean, it, I think sometimes the word community is like a buzzword that's thrown around. It's like, oh, you need community. It's like, yeah, you do. But until you really get in it, and I think we kind of both share that, it's like, wow, my heart has been so healed. And I feel like being a part of good community has made me a better man. Yeah. yeah. And seeing people that I'm around who are married, who have marriages that I admire. Yeah. Um, it's like, wow, like, I love them. I love the way they carry themselves. And like, I want that in my life. I think it happens for dudes, but honestly, I think it's much more (laughs) hard for girls to not worship marriage, not worship, you know, the Prince Charming coming Mm -hmm. and like solving all their problems. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just know because scripture says, you know them by their fruit. Like Mm -hmm. I know that you have conquered that Mm -hmm. thing. And so I'm curious, Jenna Lee, Mm -hmm. then I want to hear Ian's thoughts, but Jenna Lee, how have you as a woman, especially in this day and age, um, really conquered the temptation to not put marriage as an idol in your life? Yeah, that's good, such a good question. question. I have had different relationships where marriage has been brought up and I am so thankful that I trusted the Lord in those seasons and wow. didn't um, put marriage or even a wedding. A lot of times it's just oh, the yes. wedding people put before yeah. marriage. The dudes are like, nah, but the girls are like, yes. Oh, absolutely. That's true. I'm so glad that yeah. I didn't idolize those things because what the Lord spoke to me was that he has a best for me yeah. mm-hmm. and everyone, yeah. you know, Amen. and I had a relationship, um, a little, I'm going to be vague cause I don't want it to be <laughs> out there, but a little bit ago, where it was a good relationship with a spirit-filled man. And the Lord told me, this is good, but if you trust me, I have something better for you. Mm. And so that's just my heart posture is I want God's best for me. And I also want God's best for the person that I'm dating. And if that's not me, I'm okay with it. Amen. That's right. (laughs) That's so good. That's so good. Ian, what about you? Yeah, so I feel like my story is maybe a little different than that. Um, I mean, I've always desired marriage. It's always been something that I've wanted in my life. I mean, my parents have been, this December will be 33 years of marriage. So they've set an amazing example for me um, and something that I emulate and admire. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think in my early 20s, it's something that I desired almost to an idol level yeah. of to where I would almost put more precedent on it than I loved the Lord. Mm. And it's like... and. and the Lord, you know, over the years has revealed just how unhealthy that was. Um, I mean, but frankly, for me and just being vulnerable, like there was a lot of compromise in my life in my early 20s. And looking back at it, it was the mercy of God that he yeah. did not allow anything to happen because yeah. I was not in a healthy place, you know. Yeah. And so for me, I think, I mean, goodness, probably like 22 or 23. So a good four or five years ago, looking back at it, just, you know, 2020 hindsight, you know, the Lord kind of turn that switch off in terms of marriage and dating. Yeah. And he, he kind of revealed to me, he's like, you know, if you want to be a, a good man, a man that's worth marrying, you really need to change some things in your life. Wow. And it's not even that it was like this wow. gross external sin, but it's just like, I was selfish. I was arrogant. I was prideful. And Same. looking back at it, I was just like, man, <laughs> like I was like, I, you know, to, to the exterior world, I looked fine, but like internally, yeah. I did not like who I was. Yeah. And so the Lord was like, no, you're not ready. Turn that switch off. And it's like the light too. So it's like the desire was always there, 
but was not in a place. Yeah. So really, it's like, I mean, it's me being vulnerable. It's like, I have not attempted or pursued anything in the dating world for about four or five years. Wow. And that's just me trying to navigate my own life to be who I want to be, I feel like. Come on. Um, yeah. So it, it's probably not until, I would say, March or April of this year where the Lord was like, okay, you're ready. Wow. And being in community, it goes back to that. It's like having brothers around me that are like, yep. hey, do you think I'm ready for this? Like wow. being open in your life That's to them, yes. you know, where it's like I, so can, I can go to brothers and be like, yo, you yep. know my life. You know what I'm about. You know how I carry myself. Like you're, mm. you're involved with the inner workings more than the average person. Do you think I'm ready to pursue this if I feel like I find someone that, you know, I'm attracted to? Yeah. And it's like, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Now it's, I just, I feel the inner confirmation from the Lord, but I also have brothers that can confirm that. Yeah. And so, yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's been a long road. The desire has always been there, but it's been cool to see how the Lord has worked in me internally. I mean, not to a place of perfection, because if we're waiting for perfection, we'll be single our whole life. Um, (laughs) But it's like getting to a place where it's like, I'm healthy, and I know that if I bring someone into my life, that it's not going to affect them in a bad way. And so, yeah, it's been cool just to see and like even process it with other people to see how the Lord has healed my heart and really just changed so many things internally. Yeah, that was, you know, one of my questions was why surrounding yourself with good community important in your single oh, season. It's everything. And then, you know, you answered, you know, you answered it by letting people know that commu- that accountability comes yeah, from absolutely. community and people being able to see you, know you, yeah. understand like where you're at in life. They could, they, they become a barometer yeah. for you to determine like, you know, where you're at in your season and yeah. whether you're ready to be able to step into that season of, yeah. of, of dating, of marriage, yeah. And so, man, I really love that. I, I would love to for, for you also just to touch on, man, I think that you are, um, you both are, are people of purpose. And I think that it's so important that when you're in this season of singleness that you understand and that you really create a grid for purpose in your life. Because in every single season of your life, that tool of understanding purpose and being rooted and founded in purpose yeah. will ultimately be able to help you be the best version of yourself. And so I would just want to know from you, from both of you, like, you know, why is living a life of purpose important to you? I think a lot of times you look so f- far forward to the future of what you want that you forget to live yeah. in the present. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's good to have dreams and desires and, and you absolutely should. But it's like you have to know for your life today, whether you're single or not, what you want to be as a person. Yeah. The dreams that you have as a person. And yes. those dreams in your heart should not be tied to solely marriage. It's like, yes, it's like I want to get married one day and I want to have a family and I want to leave legacy through children and raise up godly kids. Amen. And those are, you know, things that are absolutely on my heart. But it's like I'm not so looking forward to that day that I stop living now. Amen. Yes. And so for me, it's it's been tempering. <laughs> That's so good. That place of, you know, like having purpose in my life. Like I want to see people come to the Lord. Yeah. I don't need to be married to do that. I can yeah. be single and do that. Yeah. Like, I want to see my local church grow and thrive. Yes. I don't need to be married to do that. I can do that in singleness. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like finding things that like, yeah. well, I'm single. What can I do to impact the, the community and the world around me that yeah. I don't need a wife or kids to do? Yeah. And Amen. it's like, obviously, I mean, you are better with her in your life. Exactly. You're better with him in your life. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, you guys have, you had your own lives before. That's yeah. exactly purpose. right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was know, a value that I had is yeah. like. And and I think something beautiful happens when two people who are on the pursuit of purpose Absolutely. meet. Yeah. Yes, Magic. you know what I mean. It's yes. it's beautiful. It's beautiful when you have two people who are walking in purpose, and all of a sudden they just look. It's yeah. like oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's how the Lord brings you to your spouse. Yes. right. Like if Come you're on. if you're lovesick over not having your spouse yet, like yeah. you need to. What is the most practical thing you can do besides prayer? Yeah. Walk in the purpose that God has yeah, called you to, call because it is that purpose. it is that path that will lead you to that person. Yeah, and you know, one of the things I feel like Ian just described a walking, breathing scripture of when Paul says, "Like it's better for you to be single. Mm-hmm. Like you can be a lot more effective yes. if you're mm-hmm. single." Yes. And so, when it comes to the purpose, uh, the question that Brian had to ask about purpose. Like I've seen Jenna Lee do that so well. Yeah. Like yeah. she has her own apartment. She's <laughs> working. She's doing all of these jobs. It's like she's walking in what God has asked her to do in yeah. purpose. And so yeah. I want you to answer Brian's question. Thank you. That scripture is 
just relates to what I was going to say because I'm like, Lord, this is the one time in my life you can tell me to move from Houston to Nashville, <laughs> yeah, 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 and yeah, I don't yeah, have completely. to think about anything else. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's right, like I that's don't have right. to consider my husband or my family yeah, and all yeah. those so things. Good. I just yes. have to freely do it. Yeah, you know. And I did a big career change <laughs> earlier yeah. this yeah. year where I went from project management in the tech world to caring for kids at church yeah. and I love it Come but on. it's the one time in my life I can do that without yep. thinking yeah. about yeah. anybody so else wow. I <laughs> just get to do what the Lord is asking of me in this season yeah. in a way that I think is is easier on it honestly when you're single like yeah. you're yeah. just thinking about you and God yeah. um, and that honestly used to be a fear of mine yeah. um, when it came to dating I was fearful of Lord, what is dating going to look like when I have to consider someone else? Well, I straight up had a fear of yeah. just, I don't want to put someone above you. Huh? Like, well, how, yeah. how do I balance that out? Yeah. Maybe I just won't date and it can just be you <laughs> yeah. and me like yeah. forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I've realized is when you find someone that is spirit filled in pursuing the Lord, yeah. I yeah. mean, they're putting God on the throne too. They're putting yeah. Jesus on the Amen. throne too, you know? That's good. And so you won't idolize each other in that yeah. way. Yeah, Amen. that's, that's so, good. so good. Thank you so much for tuning into the Growing With The Nearest podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you share it with a friend and also that you leave a review and subscribe on whatever platform that you are listening or watching on. And we will see you next week. <laughs>